If you've been following the two-wheeler market lately, then you know that a new brand called Kiwi recently came to India. If you've not been following things, then you're probably wondering who on earth is Kiwi and why are they asking for 3 lakh rupees for their two new scooters? Let's find out. uninitiated, Kiwi is a sister company to Benelli. Both brands are owned by the Chinese Kianjiang Group. Kiwi's two debut products for India are a pair of 300cc scooters, which tells you why the pricing is where it's at. The first of these is the Vieste 300, which is Kiwi's take on a European-style maxi scooter. And the second is the 60s 300i, which goes down the retro path. Underneath the two very different body styles, there are a number of similarities here. And the biggest common link between the two scooters is the 278cc liquid-cooled engine that they both share. Now, this motor is one of the highlights on both scooters, and that should come as no surprise, because it's been sourced from Piaggio. If you take the exceptional 10 lakh rupee BMW C400 GT out of the picture, these two Kiwis are comfortably the quickest, most powerful scooters on sale in India today. Output figures aren't quite as high as the displacement might suggest, but they're still fast enough to comfortably outpace even something like a Yamaha Aerox, beating it by about 1 second to 60 kph and a whole 5 seconds to 100 kph. Acceleration is pretty brisk up to about 80, but things do slow down a little past that. And the top speed isn't very high. We only saw about as high as 120 kph on the speedo. But a 100 kph highway cruise is perfectly doable on these machines and you have a little bit left in reserve for overtakes. And the motor goes about its job with an air of relaxation, remaining remarkably smooth all throughout. It's only at idle where you feel some vibrations and they're more pronounced on the Vieste than on the 60s. The only niggle in the engine department is the excessively long throttle travel on both scooters, which often requires you to reposition your hand if you want to go from zero to full throttle. Considering the performance levels on offer, it's no surprise that fuel efficiency is less than you get from the smaller scooters on our market. But the key ways make up for it by having large fuel tanks, 10 litres on the 60s and 12 litres on the Vieste, so range is not going to be an issue on either scooter. We did observe a noticeable difference in city fuel efficiency on our tests, and we suspect this might be down to the different wheel sizes on the two scooters, which could result in different effective gearing. Unfortunately, Kiwi was unable to provide any clarity on this matter. The biggest differences between the two are in terms of packaging and features. On this Vieste, you're sat in a more relaxed position, especially if you choose to use the floorboard extensions and stretch yourself out. But this is a classic case of appearances being deceptive. Yes, the seating position is more laid back, but it isn't quite as spacious as the maxi scooter format would have you believe. The front to back distance from the floorboard extensions to the seat is quite tight, and even for someone for my height, if you're around the six foot mark, you'll definitely find yourself cramped, even with your feet at the very front of the floorboard extensions. You can't slide backwards to make more room either because of the rider's backrest. Now, usually this is a nice little thing to have, but in this case, the backrest is uncomfortably hard and you will feel some pain after leaning against it for a while. The seat itself could also do with a little more padding. After a while, you end up sitting on the base plate. It's quite shallow. On the 60s, it's a more conventional scooter seating position, and this relatively flatter floorboard adds a great deal of practicality. Contrary to appearance, this is actually the more comfortable scooter to sit on. You're sat more upright here, but there's a healthy amount of room on the floorboard, and the seat is better shaped and padded. It is a little wide at the front though, so getting both feet firmly down is a little challenging. But for India, this scooter cuts a more familiar figure with a luggage hook and a flat floorboard, and that extra practicality will probably earn it a few more fans than its sibling. And speaking of practicality, the two scooters take slightly different approaches when it comes to storage. On the 60s, it's only the rider's seat that flips open, so the boot is a little small but quite deep. On the Vieste, the entire seat flips open, so you've got a longer boot, but it is quite shallow. So overall, you've got roughly equal amounts of storage space on both. One issue here though is that the boot lid doesn't remain open by itself. There are more differences when it comes to features. Neither of these is what you'd call lavishly equipped. They both have basic semi-digital LCD dashboards and no fancy Bluetooth connectivity or TFT displays. But the Vieste has a bit of an upper hand over its sibling. 
with keyless operation and its party piece, heated grips. Other features that are common to both scooters include a USB charger and all LED lighting. But where these scooters really struggle to justify their price is when it comes to finish levels. The quality of plastics isn't what you'd call top-notch, the switch gear doesn't feel very premium to operate, and the keyless knob on the Vieste looks like it came off a home appliance. By virtue of their displacement, both scooters need to have ABS, but they could have got away with a single-channel system, and it's nice that they go the extra mile and offer dual-channel ABS. The brakes themselves are also another area of difference, and the Vieste's Jejuan setup feels noticeably sharper than the Nissan stoppers on the 60s. In the suspension department, the tables are turned. Both scooters are set up on the firmer side, but the Vieste is the harsher of the two, and the stiff rear setup really batters your backside on bad stretches of road, and the unforgiving seat doesn't help things either. The 60s is relatively more supple in the way it rides, and despite having smaller 12-inch wheels compared to the Vieste's 13s, it does a better job of keeping you isolated from the road. It's quite strange to sum up these two scooters, really. It's a little difficult to say whether they're expensive or not. Nobody else can sell you a 300cc scooter for less, but nobody's really trying to. They're roughly twice the displacement of a 150cc scooter and a little more than twice the price. But compared to other two-wheelers that you can get at this price point, they do fall short a little. Now, of course, they can't quite match the outright performance levels of a 3 lakh rupee motorcycle, but that's not what they're intended to do anyway. The trouble is, they can't match the quality and finish levels of a 3 lakh rupee motorcycle either, and the 60s falls well short of the equipment levels you expect at this price point as well. Overall, both scooters struggle a little to justify their premium price tags. But there are good mechanicals underneath, and the engine especially is a big attraction here. So if you are a fan of the sensibility of the scooter format, then these make a decent stepping stone up from the smaller scooters on our market. Between the two, the 60s is our pick of the pair because it's definitely the more comfortable, practical, sensible scooter here without sacrificing any performance.